you watch these action movies where it's like Brad Pitt and his whole family like fight. Most of the time, they're they're just dead. You know, if it's, <laughs> if it's like four, if it's like a family, it's like one dude and then like a chick and then two kids who can't like move like. <laughs> support them like they're just gone you know like we're seeing the one successful right. family the entire movie else is getting that. fucking wiped out world war z is like we're just seeing the good shit we're not seeing like the family that's like come on get up the stairs you're you're dragging it get off your phone and then they're dead like that's that family <laughs> there's most of the families are that family i did not have sexual relations with that woman Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Oops, the podcast. Julio Gallarotti joined, as ever, by my trusty sidekick and confidant. Ryan is really polite. Lynch. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. His special just came out on YouTube. Uh, it's called Dance Fatty Dance. That's correct. A hilarious comedian and trailblazer in the industry. Please give it up for the hilarious Dan St. Germain. Holy shit, I'm a trailblazer? Trailblazer. I was the, I was the first black woman to ever do comedy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dude, you were in, a trailblazer. In Iowa. Um, I, I, I remember, uh, speaking of Fat Baby, I mean, <laughs> I used to do Fat Baby, your, 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 your room all the time, which was like mm-hmm. a blast. But if you had, I mean, if you had had... What's the light? What's the the spotlight? Light? If you had it, well, what's the what's the light they use in the hotel rooms? Black light. Oh. Black light. If you had a black light in that place, <laughs> holy shit, it would just be one one like murder would be solved after another. <laughs> so we haven't talked about this show a ton on the pod, so we should though. This is fun. So I, we we have talked about it. You guys are familiar. The show was called Fat Baby. We did it for years. Yeah. It was sort of the like it was one of the kind of cool shows at the time. I'm now realizing it was a cool show. It was a cool show. It was a bad comedy show. It was not set up well. We didn't sort of try to change that for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> it was so anxiety provoking. though on it. We did. And that actually, I would argue, potentially worked against me. <laughs> <laughs> In some capacity. Because it was this cool show. It was fun. It was like a party show. People would like... There was like good looking girls. Like it was a fun show. But then I didn't get laid once from it, by the way. (laughs) We were all like newer comics, sort of. I guess Ricky was a little more established. Ricky's a little more. I guess he he was the he was the older guy there. He was like the ringleader as far as like comedy clout of the crew. But then there was us and sort of like people would come and they do the show and the show was bad. And there was a DJ who was making noise during the show and like people would get annoyed at us. So even I was talking to Mike Lawrence about this recently, and I had actually completely forgotten that this happened. But the he DJ reminded was me. annoying. The DJ annoyed him a lot, and I guess he like said some shit during the show. I I legitimately didn't remember this, but he brought it up, and I was like, oh, he and he he was like, dude, I'm sorry. By the way, I was like, oh, dude, I'm sorry. It was like one of those right. things, you know, which was nice. Mike's highly him. autistic, so that's just how he communicates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great guy. But anyway, so I'm just trying to like paint the picture of the show. Dan used to come do it every once in a while, mm-hmm. um, and you know, we would get into some trouble. Yeah. Some... Well, I don't know. Are we allowed to talk about this guy? Yeah, yeah I think so. Can talk. I mean, I mean he I... hasn't been in our lives for what was must be must be almost ten years. It's been now. a while. It's been a while. It's so... been a long time. So I don't think he's gonna. And I don't think this is his Christian name. And I don't know that he is widely called that. We may have just <laughs> cultivated this name. We, for had, him. we had a mutual. Coke dealer. <laughs> there, no. I don't know if you did Coke, but at the time I did Coke and his name was <laughs> his name was Satan. <laughs> and I remember like I was all fucking drunk and I was like getting like ordering blow from Satan. And I was like, I was like sending him shitty like texts because he was taking forever. Oh, yeah. And I remember you were the voice of reason. You're like, hey, man, his name's Satan because he went to jail. <laughs> You're like, he's not like a safe person. Like, like, dude. He didn't go to jail for parking tickets <laughs> because he was like a smaller guy. So you didn't like, but I guess he had that Joe Pesci sort of thing. Dude, that's so funny. I can picture him being like, dude, take it easy with Satan, man. I know he doesn't look like he's much, but that guy is willing to go back to jail. I promise you. I, he does seem like he's willing to go. He did seem like he was willing to go back to jail. Satan used to hang out at this show. 
And yeah. we we didn't sort of like want him to be there because he was the one who could get illegal things. He just happened to be the guy right. who could. When you run a show at Fat Baby, Satan shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Satan is a frequent customer. Was Satan. Satan his name or was that a name that you gave him? We gave him that name. Okay. I think I called him Satan in text messages. <laughs> like I think if like if there was a court case, I would have to testify that I got my <laughs> By the way, I have no idea whether that guy's alive now. Same. No idea. <laughs> a lot of that crew have sort of like moved on to the next stage of their life in a good way. Yeah. Uh, of the like sort of random people who were there. Right. Like that, Petey. Was what, Petey there a lot? Petey Dabro? So I didn't mean from a comedian perspective, oh, okay. but Petey was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I still see him around. I see him around too. And that show, honestly, like he had a, a moment where like his shows were the best shows. Right. And it was almost as if like they, they did the cool part of our show. Plus the show itself was also good. I think what happens is like. If you're like a pretty nice, popular person before comedy, you have like a couple of years of like, oh, I'm gonna, I can put together a really good show. And then if you don't blow up, they all disappear. But if 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 you blow up, then people will still keep coming. Obviously, interesting, interesting. You know, right? Or you hand the show off eventually when you're like right. sick of doing it or whatever. But they saw that Knitting Factory. Knitting Factory was like the best show in oh, New York man. City for like five years straight, and then it just like went to nothing. It seemed like in like three months or something. like that. Knitting Factory was, I think, did Hannibal start Knitting Factory? Hannibal started it. So this and Hannibal, when Hannibal started it wasn't about. very good. <laughs> like it was, it was like I, it was decent, but then it like got better by the end of his run. And then he passed it on to like Will Miles and all those mm -hmm. dudes, and that's when it was like great. Yeah, yeah. And then it like, and then they passed it to those those girls. I forget mm -hmm. their Marie Faustin, I think. And yeah, like and that. Sydney. And, and then it was I like mean, a couple uh, months later, it was like over. I think I thought it lasted longer. I thought oh, it really. I, I don't know specifically. Maybe they. Oh yeah, they they had a good run. They had like a yeah, year. They had a did. year where they were packing people in. Yeah. And then it just stopped. Like everything stops. Totally. Uh, but yeah. So this is an interesting. So during this time when I was sort of breaking into trying to do this, you were already sort of like not only established, but you were sort of like the guy. Wow. Well, that's Do you good. know this? Did you know this? No, I didn't know that I was the guy, but uh, I would love to get that back <laughs> if that's at all possible. <laughs> I mean, I knew that um, I got put up. Just the, the great thing about New York is that, like, if you're funny, they'll put you up. Like, there's mm -hmm. always, like, a dearth of spots available. Right. But, yeah, I was do. that was there. Well, I think that, that that's the point because I was, like... It was a good year because I like had a show in development of Fox. I had just done Conan. I had just done my half hour special, and then like I moved to LA and I like wrote on a bunch of shows. Um, so I think that that was like industry wise when I was like the hottest or whatever that I did not take advantage of. By the way, uh, like I just I was like, oh yeah, you just keep working. You don't have to work on social media. That's not going to be the thing. It had not yet really become a thing yet. But it's an no. interesting, we talked, we talked about this with a couple of people where like you get this, you get the path that you are told is the path and then there's new things, but you don't need to worry about those. You're busy doing the, the thing traditional that, things. Yeah. I was, I was doing all the, like in my mind, like I was still going to, I was like, Oh, I did a half hour. I'm going to do the hour on comedy central and get right? paid a hundred grand or $125,000 to do that. Cause that was the actual path and now that's completely changed so right totally you know it's 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 a it's a completely different beast now you dude so much so were you the guy and you are the guy as well still i don't want this Ugh. to make it seem like you are no longer the guy <laughs> you were the guy you are this the guy like mickey Rourke and the wrestler or something. <laughs> mickey <laughs> but, wait, but dude so you i remember people using you as an example of they're like well not everybody's gonna get a development deal from from montreal like saint germain like nobody else can do is you know is that that did happen right I no huh. I, that's there is the the last guy who got <laughs> like a, there was guys who got development deals after me I think but the big the big story then was this guy there's a comic named Chicken who got a development deal and then like he blew it all in a year and blew his brains out he like, killed that was, Chicken yeah, killed he, himself like, he killed himself yeah they kind of killed the rooster oh my god uh, so that was no I had I had I had, I did Montreal then I did Conan. And then I sold a show at Fox that I was pitching, but I wasn't like, it wasn't like nobody just gave me money to be like, Oh, it was like, it was based on me, but I still had to go and like do my dance and like yep. do that kind of. And then I got another deal based on that. And by the way, neither of them went to series, but um, I did sell a show, but you know, like it's, it's like some of those people like have like, 
lapped me that were no faces that year. You know, like mm-hmm. that's what they would call it, the unrepped ones. Like, oh, yeah. You're like, it's like Dan Soder was no faces and I'm opening for him in the next, you know, in a couple weeks from now. So it's like nothing is permanent and nothing, you know, like uh, nothing is, you can't really hit your wagon on fucking anything. Right. I don't think. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. dude. Uh, of course. And it's, it's always interesting to see. I, I have taken a lot of comfort in the acceptance of it. I don't yeah. think it doesn't need to be. I know that if I can do the things that I need to do, I will likely be happy with the outcome to some degree. Right. You right. can only control things so much. Right. We were talking about this. It's like it's such an emotional roller coaster that if you can be OK enough to be there, even when you feel like fucking dog shit. Yeah. It, you, it, it'll get you somewhere. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's the the thing is, is just to try to keep like being funny as hard as that can be, mm-hmm. you know, like there's always going to be a premium on that. You totally. Know? Like you're never, never going to be the cool guy. It's, it is funny now watching some people like turn, like, like even now, like, 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 like right now, like I'm promoting the special and I, I'm, I know I've got like a show in development at, at Peacock, but like, you know, Amazing. things aren't like, you know, as hot for me that as it is now, but it's like, that's almost like kind of like it, it, it like it, 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 it sucks because money wise you want it to be there, mm-hmm. but like you do have that, like you get back into that. Oh, like fucking three or four years in, like, I'm like, you know, I'm really like, Oh, they're not working me here. They used to work me. Okay. I'm going to get back there. Right. So it does, but it's also exhausting because I'm going to be 40. Oh my God, so, and, and that gets kind of fucking old too. Totally. You know? Yeah. No, we were literally just talking about this on the, the last episode. Cause I'm just so interested in it because inevitably like, one will have bigger years than other years, right? Yeah. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but like how it, the, the problem with it potentially is like the legacy of like, I had my best year, whatever year that was. And thinking that for whatever reason, you might not be able to recreate that, which is not true. You're making that up in your own head. If you're saying that to yourself, I say it to myself. Um, yeah, I think I, I don't know. I think like it was, uh, I, I think yeah, if you go, th- if you have that mentality, you're fucked. Totally. You know, like if you're like, cause like all the stuff that was like, even the stuff that I mentioned to you here, like doesn't mean what it, like having a show doesn't mean the same thing as it did I know. It's crazy. anymore. Like, like for instance, like what would you rather do? Would you rather, okay. If right now, if you got, if you got the choice f- between one Rogan appearance and five tonight show appearances, right. You'd pick no Rogan brainer. in a second. No it brainer. wouldn't eat. It's a no brainer. No brainer. And if you if you had said that ten years ago, you'd been like, "You're a fucking maniac." Totally. And now it'd be like, "Yeah, for whatever." I ne- like it wasn't even like I was like, "Oh, should I get my should I, should I get late like like my my late night set together for the special?" And in my head, I'm like, "No, just get on podcast. Like, that's the only yeah. thing that matters right now." Right. Yeah. Like, what are the like a lot of the late night sets like from a year ago? Unless you're like like really big or already have a fan base. Like I think list set is doing really well. And then there's that guy, Ralph Barbosa who did oh, really yeah. well, but like, and he's a good special too. Yeah, he's a really good special, but like, unless you have a built in audience, like your, your numbers are, they're, they're going to be right. fine. They're not going to be as big as your Instagram numbers. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's very bizarre, man. What stresses you out the most about the current, about, about right now? For you, I have three dogs that seem to always be in the hospital. <laughs> so that's that's like like we just like we just went we we just uh, took our dog for grooming today, our terrier, and like a wire terrier mutt or whatever, and it was like fucking a hundred and eighty dollars after like you know, taxes and tip and shit like that. So like New York is just constantly the price like they keep increasing prices to just try to push us out. You know, like right. push everybody out, push the poor people out. So I guess it's always been like kind of a financial strain. But mm. yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that um, as far as like coming up with new ideas, I mean, that, that that's always got to be like a, a stressful thing, too. You know, like because right now I'm in the middle of, you know, I just did a special and I right. have about and it's like, out. Yeah, and it's out. So I have about like 25, 30 minutes of the of the new whatever the new hour is going to be. But I still have like I'm headlining this Saturday or this Friday. I forget the Saturday at, uh, in Iowa. And I'm like, I, I, you know, I kind of want to have a whole new 45. Totally. So that's like constantly coming up with stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and constantly, you know, like trying to make yourself relevant. I think that that's always, you know, and, and, and as you get older, it gets it gets tougher to want to be the re- relevant guy because you realize like that doesn't 
It's not important, you know? And the guy who tries to be the relevant guy when he's in his 40s, if they're not like, I, I, I know some specifically who I'll tell after this podcast, <laughs> but like the guy is like trying to like be the scenester when he's in his mid forties right? And, and, and he's not, he hasn't like graduated to the sense where he's still, he's still like, that's the saddest fucking dude in the universe, man. Like mm-hmm. I won't say who it is. No, I know, <laughs> I will, so I know what you mean though. It's like, as opposed to sort of understanding yourself, you're chasing the thing that you think. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you just look old and out of touch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like, do you remember when, when I started, cause you started after me, I mean, the guy was, when I was coming up was Dimitri Martin, like that yeah, first year, yeah. that was the one everybody talked about. And that whole type of comedy is got is it, it's still there. Like you still have like Joe Para, mm-hmm. you still have like a couple guys who do it, but for the most part, like that type of comedy is done. Right. You know, like it, 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 it seems like, you know, if you, if, if you just concentrate on your own life and making it funny, I guess that that works. But if you try to like, oh, this is the thing now, you're fucked. <laughs> right. You know, right. Like, you're fucked because it's going to move on with it. That's why like, like my manager will be like, oh, okay, write a zombie show or something. And then you write a zombie show and then they're like, actually, we're looking for alien shows right now. Like, right. You just told me to write a fucking zombie show, you know? Yeah. Like, so if you like get in that mentality, I think, I think you're going to be in trouble. My life has changed since I started wearing me undies underwear. Mm. I like the boxer brief. I like the standard black. They're so incredibly comfortable. They make me confident. And I'll tell you why, dude. Sometimes when you wear a pair of underwear that doesn't fit you right, your body spills over the side of the underwear. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that just doesn't feel good, even when they fit you. These are designed in a way where I don't know what the heck they're doing, but it hugs you in just the right way where it just makes you look the way that you should look. Mm -hmm. You look good in them. I feel good in them. They're so comfortable. They're light. They're breathable. It's the best pair of underwear I've ever worn. Yeah, if you haven't, tried on a pair of me undies yet it's one of those few instances especially when you get older that you get to experience something overwhelmingly exciting for the first time <laughs> uh you can tie that together with any associations that you want but the first time i put on me undies i was like whoa they've completely replaced anything else as an undergarment in my wardrobe and i have obviously no regrets about it yeah, there's nothing like them, guys. They have all styles available, whatever sort of underwear you are partial to. They got it. Briefs, boxer briefs, all sorts of different styles. They have uh, the ball caddy situation, yeah, uh, which will make you look good and feel good. And it's also super comfortable. They have a bunch of novelty, different designs, fun designs, stuff for him and her. They are the best. As the great Jadakiss once said, I'm not <laughs> cocky, I'm confident. So when you tell me I'm the best, Ryan, it's a compliment. Mm. Me undies. So get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash Oops Podcast. That's MeUndies.com slash Oops Podcast for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Well, so you are, you know, in, you are very good friends with, a, uh, you know, a, compl- a cohort of the most successful people in comedy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And in, in yourself included. Um, but like, does that give you any comfort? I'd like ever? to Ramora eel on them. I, you know, I, I, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I mean, there's all my friends. So I'm like excited, you know, like I want them to do well, you know, but like, yeah, it just, I do think that like, you probably had this too when, when you do kind of want to stick like they have something in AA where it's stick with the winners, you know, like stick with the people. Now, AA, I've, I've, I'm always kidding, like six months sober and going out. So I've never <laughs> been to stick with the winner guy in AA. But with comedy, it's always like, <laughs> hey, man, stick with the people who are like really doing it. And then if you do, you know, and then by proxy, your stuff is going to mm-hmm. be just as good. Because I remember the first year I did comedy, I was with all these guys who were like, you know, these bringer show dudes. And like, you know, it just, it clearly like they, they wanted to, you know, they wanted to, it's like when I went to the, like I went to theater school, that's another dumb decision I made. But like when you get out of theater school, if you're not auditioning, you start these like theater collectives with your friends. Mm-hmm. And it's basically just a way to isolate yourself from the real world, <laughs> you know, like, so you don't like, so yeah, so you don't like, you're like, you can like continue this delusion of like, oh, I'm still doing stuff, even though it's like all right. your friends that are coming to the shows. And, and you can do that in comedy too. Mm-hmm. Um, Totally. But yeah, I mean, like, I think being friends with the funnier people just makes you, makes you better. But I I don't think like, you know, any of them have, 
Like, I didn't specifically go out and I was like, man, this guy's going to fucking blow up. Right. You never really I know. was wrong every time yeah. I had that, you know, there's That's people that, thing. yeah, there's people that I, I had, I had put, I would put my money on that like didn't do shit, you know? Right. So no. So that's an interesting thing too. It's like this idea that, uh, it's hard to predict who's going to be a person who does stuff because sometimes yeah. the person, not only it won't be obvious for a variety of reasons, including the fact that they don't seem capable. <laughs> they don't, right? Yeah. They're not they don't, good at anything. Well, what is it going to be? <laughs> and then they do it somehow. They get good. They get funny. Something happens. Yeah, dude. It does happen. I mean, I will get the fact like when me and Mike Lawrence, there was a time where like, he was living in a basement. I was living in a hundred dollar a week, like SRI or SRO. What is that? It's like when you pay by weekly in, in, in New York. And I was like living in like, I was like living with this guy who like carried around a gun and, <laughs> and like I was doing like 16 open mics a week. And like Mike was, like, and we were like poor, and like every everything sucked. And then like like now you look at like oh shit, we've done a lot of stuff. We're both married. He's got a fucking kid. Yeah, adorable like it's like you kid. end up like like somehow it ends up like you, you end up being on your staying on your feet at some point. Although you probably have that. We were have like one or two friends from childhood or high school that I'm like still haven't figured it out. Like how they've done so well type of thing? No, like half the opposite. <laughs> where no. they have like, uh, <laughs> But all those guys, like all the people that I'm like close with who are super funny, who have done well, have all had some degree of like pretty intense personal discipline around this shit. You mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. Um, they, I mean, they all do different things, but right. it's, but they all have like, you know, like when I'm opening for soda, for instance, it's like we're we're all we're both doing just new stuff, and it's like keeping us it's it's weirdly keeping us honest. Although for me, it's like the sweetest spot in the world. I do like yeah. 25 minutes, and then he has to fucking anchor the show or whatever. But I, I feel like keeping those people around. You got to keep people around who are going to be like, no man, you're not like this isn't you're not doing it right. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? no, totally. Um, so it's funny. It's funny to hear. I, I, when I asked that question initially, I didn't even mean this. I meant specifically as like, if you know people who are doing well, it takes a little bit of pressure off of you because if for whatever reason for six months, you don't execute properly or you do, you make a mistake. And you now suddenly in theory, having connections to all these people would allow you to maybe have opportunities. If you needed them, I mean, it. I, I you know, like, look, most of the state writing jobs that I've got, like, I'm, 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 you know, writing for a friend right now who's doing something, you know, pretty big. Um, I'm working with, you know, like, you know, me and Dan Soder and Stone Cold Steve Austin sold the show, Sick, like yeah. both like Soder, <laughs> both Soder is way of like way above me exposure wise, and Steve is way above both of us, you know, as far as like exposure wise. So I, I think that that does help, but also the days of like. Like I have gotten a lot of writing jobs by just being known, being a funny comic, and that guy knows me from comedy. But now, so many networks and studios put in their own guys, or they're like, "We need, you know, a pansexual Burmese, you know, uh, you know, forty-five year old or something like that," and you can't even <laughs> compete for that spot. So, like, <laughs> it, it helps, but it's also not like a like the fr- the amount of friend spots. Compared to like the '90s and the 2000s, I think are a lot less interesting, you know, than they used to be. You also don't want to have to depend on a thing that you can't predict or control in any way. Yeah, where it's like it's the same with like acting, where you know, say you do commercials, and I've done some commercials in the past, or whatever, yeah. and like I book a commercial, and like seven things go right, and suddenly this commercial does really well. Wow, yeah, that's great! Yeah. But you can't expect you can't expect that that will happen every year. No, you know what I mean, no, so not like. At all. And I hate it because it's like I want a routine, but that's impossible mm-hmm. in this business. It's impossible to have a routine, you know? Yeah, it um, is impossible. It's absolutely impossible. Like, <laughs> like if I, I, I wish I could just be like, okay, well, this year is going to be a lean year, and then the next year it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's fucking not how it works. You just have to constantly... God, this is this is like this is a, a deceptively anxious podcast because it's like a, a beautiful apartment and the couch is great and now I'm starting to get nervous. <laughs> I think about like all the things I can't fucking control. So oh, sorry, dude. No, no, didn't it's mean okay. to you. I mean, you're in the same spot. We're all in. The, yeah, we're literally yeah. all in the same spot. It's a tough gig. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it, the other thing too that's frustrating is like you don't get to enjoy your success because, like you said. 
th things change can change so rapidly in theory that you could have done all the things right and you are doing so so well and then like that like whatever you were just doing doesn't matter and you yeah. need to like figure it out again it's not the same yeah. as like a traditional path yeah nobody cares in a variety of ways but that one too where it's like yeah. even when you've made it you still got to be careful i mean dude there's people <laughs> yeah i mean there's people in snl who like a year later it's like who the fuck is that guy now i know, you know? i know it's tough dude um so anyway but so, so how long did you live in la for four years did you like it i liked it a lot you know the stand-up scene sucks compared to here but i still got up enough i mean the thing is i was like one foot in one foot out guy so i would like do um you know i was like on a show so i, would, I feel like i was only coming up with like 10 new minutes a year you know opposed <laughs> yeah, to like yeah. uh, new york where you're constantly like turning stuff over totally um but the food was great you know, the people are beautiful. The temperature is great. Mm -hmm. But like it's I mean, if you want to be a stand up, you want to live here, especially now. There's like I'm, I'm going back there like late April or early May. And usually like my 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 schedule is like jam packed with shows. And this one, I'm just like, I'm, I'm getting up a couple times, but it's yeah. like, there's not as many shows as there used to be. For right. Sure. Well, and also just the whole like Texas move sort of like. Oh yeah, changed things. Happened. You know, I don't. I don't really I haven't know. Been there yet? I'm going to Austin and for Moon Tower in oh, April, nice. and you're not allowed to. I think you're you're not allowed to do the Rogan Club. Like oh, interesting. There. Savage. You know? <laughs> They're trying John to like. Lies in the I sand. get. I kind of get it. Like where it's like because then they'll put you on the poster, and it's like, well, I'm not getting any return for my investment. But it is. <laughs> it is amazing that like. Austin's become the new. It feels like it's going to be a documentary. Like in, in two years, they're going to run out of water or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> these improvers are going to be eating each other or some shit like that. Um, but for right now, you know, people were killing it. There. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's interesting. I, I mean, I've been there once. I didn't. I think the mothership had just opened, but I was doing. I was doing a different spot. I haven't been there yet, but I've heard that people have said that it. I think Francis said this. It feels like the. Comedy store, but all the security people are armed. <laughs> That's <laughs> horrible. That's terrifying. <laughs> like they all have guns. Yeah. That's absolutely terrifying. I know. I know. When was the migration? Like 2020, COVID? Yeah, around COVID. Around like COVID. Right after COVID. Well, because the Rogan Club was about to open around then. And it was, I think Adam from the store went, I think mm -hmm. he's, I don't know if he's still running it. I think he is. We're in the mothership now, but like he came over there. So that whole, I've never been there. I've never done a set there. I hear it's great. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I hear you get paid really well, which is, that's all I care for doing <laughs> spots too. Like, not, yeah, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. but it's cool. It's cool that that exists. Uh, and yeah, it's funny. Like I, to what degree, I mean, I try my best to not be too proud in the sense of like, if, if there were an opportunity for me to go somewhere and maybe I can meet some people and then maybe that'll lead to like cool opportunities. It gives me a lot of anxiety. And it always has. Well, we were just talking about this where I'm like invited. I have a spot tonight, but I'm invited to this party afterwards. And I asked you if you were going and you said, I, you, 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 you were like, I, I don't think I'm going. Um, I didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> the whole time. It's like, you're like, oh, do I because I don't know if I want to go there. And But then part of me is like, I just had a fucking special. So do I want like just in case I bump into somebody? But I don't know, man. It's I'd prefer to just go home and be with my dogs and. Mm -hmm my wife, you know, like, and hang out with the friends I choose to hang out with because inevitably you're going to be around somebody in comedy. You just <laughs> personally detest yeah. like the first, like, like I never, I never get to these things that I'm hanging out with you. It's always like, I'm like so, with some guy I did bringers with like <laughs> in 2008, you know, who somehow <laughs> hasn't killed himself. Like is still doing this shit. Uh, and That's I, what happens I, at the Christmas party. Yeah. Oh my God. The, the Christmas, Christmas party. Parties, is where you see the the guy from the bringer show who's still alive. Somehow. Yeah, who brings in his puppets or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, dude, this is a fucking nightmare. I think you just talked me out of going tonight. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go home after my spot. Well, you you do not drink. I don't right now. I'm, I just got, I got out of rehab in December. But I, I when I knew you in New York, I had not drank for like two. Well, I was still doing coke with Satan. So <laughs> I took like two or three years. Like I'm a guy like I'll get like three years and I'll go out. And I'm trying to make this one kind of last. Mm -hmm. um, or I like I remember one time I was just smoking weed for like a year. Um, that seems to work for people. It does work for some people. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, I wish it worked for me. You're the poster child of the weed gateway theory. Yeah, I really am. Yeah, I'm, I'm the because the problem is, is if like you like other shit, 
you smoke a joint and you're like, oh, this is cool. And then like half an hour later, you're like, this sucks. <laughs> 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 I want to be off my ass right now. I'm not just like thinking about an interaction I had at Starbucks at 10.30 a.m. You know, like, it's terrible. That's uh, funny. So, yeah, I, 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 now I'm not. I have like four or five months back now. I haven't fucking done shit. Um, I wanted to be sober for the special push nice. now that it's over. <laughs> kind of like, oh, oh. Baby guys, summer's coming. You need the proper socks. You need socks. You need socks that don't <laughs> sock. Oh, that was very good, dude. I cannot oh. wait to slap these on. Their compression socks are the best one in the game. These are the low cut ones. They're kind of, I guess, most famously known for their sort of high compression sock, which just helps the blood flow go to the proper part of the foot. Which is the thing that matters. Good distribution, good blood flow, uh, good circulation, all that stuff. Uh, Dr. Motion has socks for everybody, whatever you might need. I like a nice pair of low-cut compression socks. Uh, they look nice in the sneaker. The top isn't kind of spilling over. You know what I mean? They're stylish. You're able to let your ankles rock out uh, while still being fully supported and protected. It's a great product, great brand. You got to make sure you get yourself some Dr. Motion socks today. Yeah, the enhanced cushion just offers... A lever, a level of durability that that I don't see on any other socks in the market, and the tail here kind of looks like the logo of the Utah Jazz. It sure does, right? I don't know if you see that, but it sure does. Great sock. So visit the website drmotionsocks.com to check out all of their products and explore the new collection. The spring and summer stuff just dropped, so get in there. The pandemic was tough because I was smoking weed a ton during the pandemic, and then I was, and I was just like smoking like every day because there was like nothing else to do. Um, and then I, I eventually stopped that, but, um, yeah, I, I wish I could just, the problem is, is like whenever I smoke is I actually, I can't just have like one joint. I'll end up like having a fucking hundred milligram edible to get to sleep. Right, 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 right. You know, right. I don't, I don't use weed in a chill way. Right. I wish I did. Does weed like, so it's, it sounds though like your brain is fine besides the fact that it makes you maybe do other stuff. But like, do you have a good relationship with weed as far as like how it makes you feel when you smoke it? Depends. I mean, I'm not doing it now. So I've had times where I've had a great relationship with it. I've had times where I get super paranoid, but then sometimes I like, like the paranoia because it's like, Ooh, I'm under my cover scared. This is great. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're in your fuck. You're 38. Like, what are you, what kind of man are you? Uh, <laughs> so yeah 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 um i i it, my relationship with weed kind of vacillates it, depending yeah. on but i guess now they're there i i do think that you can get a strain now that's just totally chill i i guess I they know. say so they, they say so they say but then you'll you'll kid yourself too where you're like oh sativa just makes more creative and then you like look at some of the shit you run on sativa and you're like this is fucking terrible yeah yeah you know like it's like i don't this has just been like a run-on sentence for yeah. like six paragraphs totally um How yeah about you you are you do you smoke daily no i don't really smoke no. and i've never really liked it and yeah. again, this is the show was like very much a weed show mm. that we used to do. Like everybody smokes a ton of weed. So everybody mm. just thinks that I smoke weed. I also like I'm kind of a squinty laugher and smile. I yeah. like to look high all the time, yeah. but I, I don't really like to smoke. And this is the thing. Sometimes I'll like take a puff, you know, before bed, if I'm whatever. But like, dude, I'm telling you, if I smoke weed one time the next day, like I'm so much more ADD, even if I take one puff and like just... I can't do anything. Really? Even when I'm not high. Do you drink at all? Or yeah. No? I, I, I do. Drinking's fine. I theoretically do it all. Mm -hmm. I, I Besides drugs that can kill you doing right. them once. Yeah. Otherwise, like, I'm open to doing things. Right. But drinking, I don't have a good relationship with either if I feel as if my output needs to be high. Yeah, well, we're getting older, too. We yeah. can't get away with the same. Like, now a hangover is like a four-day dude thing. Yeah, and, and especially if I've been, like... If I've been doing a lot of good shit, you know, I'm like exercising, I'm yeah. working, I'm writing, whatever. If I were to get like really bombed, like there's no way I'd be able to do that for like seven days. Yeah. And I'd almost like erase all the progress I've made. Yeah. So and I, then you I get depressed. Yes. So I approach it delicately. I ha I try to have a few drinks down to burn it down occasionally, but I feel more and more. I'm like, okay, I'm progressing to the next point in my life. Maybe, maybe I'm going to have a family. Right. Like I'd love to feel comfortable going You've into You've also that. got to plan it now. It's like, all right, I'm going to have a blowout day. It's got to be, that's why it happens on Christmas. So you have like a week to recover. <laughs> right, afterwards. Right, right, right. But you need like a four day nesting period. Exactly. After it happens. Um, yeah. 
do you think theoretically you can drink and do it without it eventually affecting your life too much where you need to I've stop? been to rehab five times, so no. <laughs> so you know I that. can't. I can't. No, I was drinking a lot last year. And like where I would go, I would I would stop drinking for four months and then I would start drinking again. So no, I can't I cannot drink alcohol. Like Were my, your friends my, gra- concerned my mom about you died of it. This? My grandpa oh, died of it. No, it's okay. Like my mom, it was one of the contributing factors of my mom's death. Uh, not, not, not solely, but it didn't help for sure. My grandpa. Died. So it's like my whole family, like, you know, actually Mike Lawrence has a great joke about it. Like my family tree has a car wrapped around it. So I know I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And every time I think that I can do it, like, it's like, Oh, I'll drink beer, but then I'll have like 30 beers and I'll gain like 40, you know, I'll gain like 40 pounds and yeah. I, or like, cause I can't like, like minimum I'm having 20 beers, you know, <laughs> minimum I'm having, you know, like it's one after another. So no, I, I can't, I wish I, if I could stop at eight, I would. But I can't. Do people start telling you, dude, you know you can't handle drinking? Yeah. Everybody. I can't get everybody. I can't get away with anything. Anymore. All of your boys. All your my wife. boys. No, I can't do it. I can't get away with shit. <laughs> like when I was drinking this time around, I had to make a new friend. So I had someone to drink with. Because <laughs> all my other friends were like, I'm yeah. not going to fucking do it. So I met the, he's a like, great guy. He's still my friend today, but he was like my drinking friend. And he didn't know I went to rehab a couple times, you know, just so I had some. But if I had like showed up, you know, to, if I showed up to like, we were talking about Mike Lawrence or Dan Soder with like, like right. hey guys, let's hang out. They'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, nobody's ever happy. Like when I show up drinking, right. I don't think anybody's, nobody's excited about it. <laughs> You know, everyone's like, oh, this is the, this is like the third act of the movie where things are going down. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. That's, where did you grow up? Uh, North Jersey, Rutherford. Oh, interesting. Near the arena? Yeah, right there. Nice, Giant nice. stadium, dude. And you, like, how old were you when you started drinking? Uh, I guess I was like 12. You? <sighs> 12 or 13. I don't remember. I think I smoked weed before I drank for the first time. It was way, way easier to get 14. weed when you were younger. Yeah, and I must have started drinking when I was 15 or 16 or whatever. But it was never, like, crazy. But, like, you know, started and then had periods where I would do it more heavily. Than it, wasn't, was it wasn't scarier to get weed when you were younger than alcohol? It was easier to get weed. Sometimes it was scary to get weed, but it was okay. easier to get weed. Yeah. You had to, but you needed to have a really good fake ID to get booze. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times. Do you ever or, do a hey buddy? A hot chick. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or yeah. an older sibling of a friend. Yeah, or a sibling of a friend. But yeah, you always had the one guy that was like kind of creepy that sold weed. But it was easier for me to get coke in high school than it was getting really? booze That's sometimes. Insane. I never yeah. saw cocaine before I was in college. I never even saw it. But in high school, there was always guys who sold who went to the school. So theoretically, you could easily get it. And they yeah. knew the scary guy. But I yeah. never had to talk to the scary guy. Yeah. You know, I've They're definitely seen. had, I've definitely had, I definitely had the drug dealer with like the fucking dude who looks like he's from death row records at the pit bull. <laughs> and shit. I've definitely had that guy before that actually wasn't Satan, but there was another guy that was specifically very Suge Knighty, you know? <laughs> yeah. You never want to be in the situation where you're hanging out with somebody like that. No, like, this guy's willing can, to kill. Yeah. You don't know like, like when they're going to turn. Yeah. You know, cause eventually they're going to jail. Are you going to be the reason they're going to jail? Right. It's happening. You'd it's rather not down. be around when that happens. Yeah, for sure. Dude. Yeah. There's something for, for the booze. How did you get booze? Did you ever just ask people? I would steal from store? my parents a lot. We would steal from all our parents and then like fill with water, oh, yeah. you know? So it's like. You know, in the beginning, you're drinking Jack Daniels, and then by the end, it's like peach schnapps or whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh, and then, like, one Cherry. person would have a fake ID, and and now it's just, like, it's so interesting now, like, you know, being 40, it's, like, having that freedom. I can just go, like, after this podcast, I can just go get bombed if I that's know. what I want, you know? And just, I mean, ruin the rest of my week. But, like, <laughs> you know, you know, like high school me would be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> Did you prefer going to social comedy engagements when you were drinking still? Most of the time I was sober when, when things are going all right. When I was, when I was drinking again, like when I was, uh, I started getting stuff when I was sober. So when I was drinking, people would know there's a problem. Mm. Um, so I couldn't get away with it. But a lot of times what I would do is I would like, like just drink Diet Coke there and then go to the bar next door and get bombed. 
And then like, no, nah, I'm just drinking a Diet Coke. And I'm like, well, you're Diet Coke. Ty- I remember I was like out, out at a date with this girl. <laughs> I was drinking. And I was like, she was, she it was like, I was sober at the time. So I was like buying her drinks, but like secretly I was like taking shots at the park and I was on Oxy. Oh, so Jesus. like, I was like, and I, like the whole time she's like, it's like, isn't it weird that I'm drunk and you're sober? In my head, I'm like, no, I'm fucking, I'm tanked right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just trying to lie. I couldn't be more tanked. Yeah. Dude, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, man. I don't know. That's like a scary, the idea of that is scary. So anyway, I'm glad you, that you're feeling good. And Yeah. Um, now I'm just boring, dude. <laughs> now, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm getting my fucking dog groomed and shit with my wife. You dude. Know, whole different li- level. Do you, do you think you're going to have kids? Uh, it's not in the cards biologically for us. Um, but it, you know, if, if enough money, if, if we have enough money, I could, adopting does seem, it seems attractive, but partially like, it's like if dogs are costing this much fucking money, I know. I can't imagine, especially now it's like, you got to put your kid in private, right? I dude, I have no idea. You know, like I have no idea. It's like the public school, even since from when we were like, you know, in, in grammar school, the public school system is like completely disintegrated. The, like maybe there's still a, a couple districts you can send your kid comfortably. Like in New York City or you mean in general? Yeah, but oh, in New York City or L.A., you have to go private. So Unless your kid's a fucking genius. Unless your kid's a take fucking this, genius. Yeah. And most likely you're not going to have a kid that's genius. <laughs> you're going to have a fucking, you know, B minus C plus kid right. like everybody else in fucking America. Right. Who's buying booze and he's 12. Drinking yeah, who's fucking... buying booze. Who's not, <laughs> who's not fucking realizing their potential. That's what you have. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. It, so it makes me like really appreciate the idea of raising a kid by yourself. Because like if I had to yeah. figure all that shit out on my own, dude, I don't think I could. Did you have a you both parents were in the picture, right? Both my parents were in the picture. Yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know how you do it if you had a if if I had a single or I'll know like people who like a single parent and they're in comedy and I'm just like how the fuck do dude, you do? I know. Or like they're a feature and they have kids. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like I know. I don't know. Like I'm I have so much anxiety about you know money now and it's like i'm I'm gonna i'm not gonna be homeless the next couple months or anything like that um but i can't imagine like if i was having a kid like i I, you know like people with kids man like i have friends you have two kids your overhead could be like 10 grand a month like you know what i mean (laughs) your eyes just lit up 10 grand yeah i know friends who have basically an overhead of 10 grand a month and they're not doing anything crazy you know what i mean like that's dude yeah and like you got to be around too and you got to be around and you yeah. have to care. And like, this is a hard thing to pursue. If you care about other it's people, it's not a podcast. You just can't <laughs> give up on it. Right. right exactly. You know? And then the opportunity cost of being there is not working. Yeah. Potentially one who hopes that you can find a scenario where you don't have to, to skimp on one or the other, but yeah, all these like hot parents we see it's because like they're rich enough to have like to pay for an actual nanny. Like they're paying somebody to be the actual mom. You know, like they're they're paying somebody to look like shit and have stains all over themselves. And so because of that, they're able to be fucking, you know, Jessica Alba or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Dude, you say that, but then occasionally I'll see some like thing and it's not even like a PR yeah. thing. It's not like, look, I'm with my son. You see them like doing shit for their kids. And I'm like, damn, that that yeah. looks like it sucks. And that's like the richest person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Dude, I want to have kids. And especially because even if I'm not sure... Like just for me, my personal, I, it seems to me like I would potentially find it fulfilling to have. That. I do think there is something I will say about my friends who get older, who aren't married and don't have kids and have nothing tethered where I feel like they become like weirder and less reliable as friends. Um, and, and also it's like, cause like, have you, do you have like a friend? Like I have a friend now who's like my age. She's like, calling me about like girl problems and texts and you're just like Shut. Like, like how can I fucking it's like dude like it's like you're 40 now like just don't give a shit like you f- you fucked right so you know it's possible like it's like, like that's like shit in your 20s to worry about right, not right. fucking stuff like in, when you're 40 to worry yeah. about no agreed I, sometimes I wish I'm like man I wish that I had my shit together the way that I do now when I was living like a completely carefree life. I just yeah. wonder whether I, I never had money as a single person once. And yeah. I just like wonder what that would have been like. But 
you know, I happy, like I'm very happy with the way that life is now, but I always am like, you know, I I've graduated to like another step of my life where, you know, I'm theoretically doing better, but still somehow it feels just as stressful because I've like added all of this collateral. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, yeah, things you- and you know, apartments, whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah, you're not like in a studio anymore. Right. Which is great. And like, you know, whatever, but it just feels like we find a way and this might be, I don't, I don't mean to make broad statements on such a tangent, but Mm -hmm. like society has figured out a way to make it so that you always feel stretched. If you aren't Dude, extremely my man careful, said this to me, which is like kind of kind of gnarly. He said, it, I, wish, "I bet he wish he hadn't said it now." He goes, <laughs> "He's like one of the things you want to do when you get a when you get a client, you want to you want to make sure they buy a house so they keep working, like Damn. a beachfront house so they keep working." Yeah, you're, like, you're like that's like now it's like seems like kind of sadomasochistic. Um, Jesus, but, yeah, <laughs> it's now it's like when no one can afford to even fucking rent, Jesus. let alone buy. But yeah, you want to like. Uh, you want to make sure that they have something, you know, you want to have, make sure they have an albatross on their fucking yeah. neck all the time. But dude, that the idea of, and I don't know if I'll be able to, I probably am not sophisticated enough to pull this off, but if I were to get really wealthy, I love the idea that I could be comfortable and not need to like buy houses and shit like, or, or work. Well, the thing about buying houses is my <laughs> friends are like rich. Is like that's money they can't take away, so that's why a lot of rich people buy houses. Just buy houses. But what about yeah. multiple houses? That's like headaches and uh, bullshit. Yeah, it sounds like hard. It sounds hard, dude. All I want is I want an apartment in New York, and I want a small fucking cabin in upstate New York that I can escape to when, you know, when we run out of water here or so whatever. <laughs> like, like I, that, that's all I want. I don't need a bunch of shit. But I mean. If I had kids, like I'm trying to get them out and stuff like that, because that's another thing too, where it's like, now you're thinking about like if if like something went down, you know, like some fucking purge shit, where you've got to <laughs> like you've got to like, you know, and you have like somebody on a baby Bjorn strapped to you, you're like, oh, I'm just I'm this much more of a target. <laughs> so like most of the time, like most if you have a few, like we always we watch these action movies where it's like Brad Pitt and his whole family like fight. Most of the time, they're they're just dead. You know, if, if it's like four, if it's like a family, it's like one dude and then like a chick and then two kids who can't like move, like support them. Like they're just gone. You know, like we're seeing the one successful right. family. The entire movie. Everybody else is getting that. fucking wiped out. World War Z is like we're just seeing the good shit. We're not seeing like the family that's like, come on, get up the stairs. You're you're dragging it. Get off your phone. And then they're dead. Like that's that family. There's most of the families are that family. How worried are you about the prospect of something like this happening? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, quite a bit. Uh, but I do think I, I, I do think we're we're we're, just, we're kind of like a first world nation, like sliding into a second world nation. We're not. It's not just going to be like oh, the next day, you know. It's like Stephen King's The Stand or something. Mm-hmm. It's just. I mean, we're seeing it now. <laughs> but you should be like with inflation and like it's harder to buy stuff now. Like. So I, I think, th- and with climate change. So yes, I do think about it a lot. This is a really fun podcast, by the way, <laughs> that I've totally made like more anxiety provoking. Like in the beginning, it's like, we're just worried about our career. And now I'm like, we're not going to fuck. There's no more water. Inflation. We're out of water. <laughs> um, okay. But so, so specifically though, mm-hmm. like is climate change the main thing that, bo- that worries you? Or is it like more of anarchy? Well, now it doesn't really, I mean, climate change doesn't, Cause it's like, by the time it gets really bad, I'm going to be on my way out. Right. You know, I'm going to be like seven. If I had kids, I'd be fucking terrified. Yeah. Of change. Yeah. But if I, but like I'm in seventies, eighties, like what I get nervous about now is I don't have kids. So it's like either like, hopefully I die before my wife, mm. but if not, then it's like, I'm alone and old. And when I have like a New York cares volunteer, like, like bring me fucking muffins or something like the last couple of years of my life. Like I do get nervous about that. And then I'm like, I'm like, uh, they're like, oh, what did you used to? Oh, I used to be a comedian. What's, oh really? What's that? <laughs> oh, it was on Conan O'Brien. Who's that? You know? And then like, you know, they're robbing me like in the next door, you know, like, like, like just have, like just completely being a mark, like just a complete right. fucking, yeah. Easy, easy victim. It's um, sad so that that's best case that. scenario too. That's best case scenario. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, dude, hopefully you'll you know 
you'll continue to do well in your job. And by then you'll be able to put yourself in some cushy old age home where you can just bang a bunch of chicks. <laughs> yeah, that's, or just get the good drugs. Like there's this movie, the barbarian invasions, this French movie where it's like, it's, he knows he's dying. So like the last day of his life, he just gets like all the good heroin and he goes oh, out to a country house and has all his friends just say goodbye to him while he shoots up. And is that, is there any like twist at the end or like he no, just dies? That's it. He just dies. That's sick. It is pretty sick. You know? <laughs> that's the only thing about like, if I ever got a disease, it'd be like, if I got cancer, it'd be like, Oh, this is terrible. But what am I, what am I getting? You know, like I got a pass. All right. That's so dark. But that's true. very dark. Dude. Uh, check out dance, fanny dance, my special on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sober now. Just drinking fucking monster, baby. What is that? Is that a coffee monster? This is mo- coffee Java monster. Oh, fuck yeah. Dude. It's just fucking diabetes in a can, bro. This is, <laughs> like I'm jittering off this shit. When's the last time you took a vacation? Rehab does not count. Uh, well, yeah, re- rehab what I read to was real nice. Like I have a bunch of bits on it now. It was super nice. Um, but vacation, 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 vacation. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I'd have to think about that because almost all my traveling last year was like, like work. Was work, or then like you do the thing where you stay an extra day. Doesn't count. That doesn't count. Like oh, I'm vacationing for an extra day. That's bullshit. Because you're probably still my honeymoon. Like like two years ago, I went to St. John. Nice. How was uh, that? It was cool. It was that was a vacation, vacation. I did not do. I did not try to do open mic night, at, you know the steel drum right, bar or right. some shit like that. Uh, so yeah, that was a vacation, vacation for sure. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Obviously, it was your honeymoon. Uh, like, yeah, I did. I didn't. Do you plus get... I was drinking, so I was like, I really enjoyed it. Just eating fucking. Because even like the last time I went to Key West, it's like I was doing a show there. It wasn't a real vacation. Oh, I know that. Game. And I was burying my mom's ashes, so oh, it really God. wasn't a vacation. Jesus. But um, yeah, that's uh. I, that was the I, w- I would love to go on one it's coming up maybe my, my, maybe my 40th like yeah. I'm debating between like a party and, and just going away and part of me just thinks oh just go away yeah I'm fucking I'll get texts from people <laughs> you know what I mean yeah uh, no I've like started to wrap my head around this because I too would be like well I just went to fucking the Badlands National Park but like there's always like work associated with it either on right. the front end or the back end and then a lot of the time I do a lot of like adventure travel but it's not relaxing and my fiance that's, turned that's me on to the idea that there's a big difference between trips and vacations I'm not suggesting you go on a vacation I've just been yeah. thinking about vacation a lot I, well I mean it sounds very attractive to me <laughs> it sounds nice yeah. it's, it's hard to enjoy them if you are in you know, unless I'm having like, I just landed a huge thing and I know I'm good for like nine months. It's really hard for me to enjoy vacation. That's my problem. That's true too. Yeah. I mean, that's my problem too. You don't deserve this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the thing that sucks. But like most vacations, it's like you go to a place and you just lay down. It's like, just because you, for whatever reason are like going to another city and paying for a different bed. You like get the moral cleansing of, Oh, if I just relax here, it's like, I deserve it rather Mm -hmm. than if I was just six days home, you know, staring at my wall, doing fucking nothing. (laughs) Um, But that's, that's probably more in line with my vacation would now would just be like, Going on my sunny side roof and you know getting skin cancer. That seems. <laughs> seems <laughs> I at least won't feel guilty about that. You know. <laughs> What's your favorite place you've ever been? I know maybe uh, that's an impossible thing to do. If you think of a um, place, I, awesome. I really liked Spain when I went to Spain. I really liked Italy when I went to Italy. Uh, you know, I was just in Montreal last summer. I had a blast. I was mm-hmm. I, I was I was just doing like the club there. It wasn't like. It wasn't like, because I went there, like, when you go there for the festival, it's like, your head's, like, kind of, like, mm. all over the place. You're like, i got to meet people. But you're just there to enjoy the city. It's really nice. Um, and I do like getting, like, I just love going, like, upstate, like, McCaskill's area. I like going to Vermont. Um, nice. Yeah, but most of the, like, in, in, in New York, I'm starting to get, like, kind of turned off by almost every place in New York City now. Mm. Besides, like, my apartment and, like, the three blocks around me. But... I mean, get, going to spots now, I'm like, oh, my God, this is mm-hmm. a pain in the ass, you know? Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, I like when I when I feel energized enough to do it all. And then when I have no energy, I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Just yeah, we used to and we used to like I'm, my back back in the day when I was like, in you know, like 24, 25, it would be like my schedule was like from 12 at night to 8 a.m. I was work. I was security guard. And then I would do auditions really? from like yeah eight to nine, sleep for a couple of hours, do an open mic, and then do shows, and then go back to my work. And I would be writing during my work. It was like this insane schedule. How were you able to maintain that? 
I didn't. I only did it for like that schedule for like two years, and then I That's was able still to like, crazy. You know, so like if, if I think about that, like what I'm doing now is nothing. Yeah, totally. You know, it's nothing. Does it feel just as hard, or does it because you have no more perspective? I'm fatter and tireder, tireder, <laughs> more tired. Tireder is not a word, so it's a little bit harder now. But I, I need to. I had a vegan meal today. I went on the treadmill yesterday. Nice, dude. I'm positive direction, bro. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, uh, great to have you on here. It's an yeah, honor. Man. Have well, always honor. Uh, Come on, jeez. It's an honor. You know, no, seriously. You know, you are oh, my Kevin uh, Hart. No, man. It's just like you were Which money. You were like the cool senior when I was a freshman. So I was always sort of like paid attention to what you're doing. And well, uh, I always thought you were one of the cool kids. So thank you. dude. Turns nice. out we were both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Dan St. Germain. Dance, Dance Fatty Dance was special. Dance Fatty Dan- Dance. Fatty Dance. Check it out. You have a podcast too, you said? I I have a, I'm on a wrestling podcast, Wrestle Roast on all things comedy at free shows. I actually may be doing a new one with Sean Donnelly oh, and, I, and I'm, I mean, if people get into this, I'm like developing a show with Dan Soder, a cartoon for Peacock. So hopefully Fuck yeah. if I keep that zeitgeist going, it'll actually fucking happen. So let's go, man. There Good we shit. go. All right. Check him out at Dan St. Germain, right? On the yep. Instagram. Dan St. Germain. Uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.